Thank you. Order. Ten minute rule motion. Norman Lamb. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I beg to move that leave be given to bring in a bill to legalise the possession and consumption of cannabis, to provide for the regulation of the production, distribution and sale of cannabis, and for connected purposes. Uh, over the last few weeks, three of my constituents have individually come to see me to discuss cannabis. All three suffer acute, continuing pain. One has fibromyalgia, osteoarthritis and IBS. He has been prescribed fentanyl, which we know is highly addictive and potentially fatal. He stopped taking it out of fear of the consequences. Yet cannabis offers him essential pain relief. But he has no option but to buy it illegally. He knows at any time that he could face arrest and prosecution. Following the Government's reforms allowing for the prescribing of cannabis-based products for medicinal use, he went to see his GP to get a prescription. He was told that they, the GPs, were all under instructions not to refer patients to the pain clinic because there is no evidence of therapeutic value. Yet something as dangerous as fentanyl remains available. Another constituent who is rapidly advancing Parkinson's disease also uses cannabis. It's the only thing that helps him. He has also been told by his GP that he can't be referred to a specialist for cannabis to be prescribed. So we leave this man, who is acutely unwell, having to break the law in order to get relief from pain. This is surely cruel and inhuman. The third man, in his 50s, finds that cannabis is the only thing that offers him respite from pain following an injury to his leg. He has a lifelong allergy to codeine. Other painkillers have caused serious problems with his kidneys, but cannabis works for him. Fearing the risks of buying from a street dealer, he bought some over the internet. He then faced a police raid. Despite my pleas to the police that giving him a criminal record would not be in the public interest, last week he was given a caution. This man has been a law-abiding citizen all his life. He has found this whole thing acutely distressing. He fears that the consequence of the caution is that he won't be able to visit his son in Australia. The treatment of this man is shameful. What is the point of doing this to him? What is the possible public interest? Across the country, people like this are left with no option but to break the law. The government's reforms raised expectations, but have dashed hopes for so many people. The approach taken by the government is so restrictive that the numbers who will benefit are minuscule. If you are lucky, you might live in an area where the police force takes an enlightened approach. Chief Constable Mike Barton in Durham has effectively decriminalised cannabis for personal use, and a recent <coughs> parliamentary answer I received reveals that in some areas, prosecutions and cautions have plummeted. Yet surely we can't justify this postcode lottery where two people behaving in exactly the same way are treated differently depending on where they live. One will be forever tarnished with a criminal record and the other won't. It is clear that the recent reforms are not working, so the government should look in the round at the harm that prohibition of cannabis is causing across the country and try to come up with a more enlightened approach. In Canada, the Liberal government of Justin Trudeau has implemented a new legal regulated market for cannabis for recreational and medicinal use. Their approach is instructive. In June 2016, the Minister of Justice, the Minister of Public Safety and the Minister of Health jointly set out the key principles which should guide reform, including protecting young people by keeping cannabis out of the hands of children and youth keeping profits out of the hands of criminals, preventing people from receiving criminal records for simple cannabis possession, reducing the burden on the police and the justice system, 
protecting public health and safety by strengthening the law with respect to serious offences such as selling cannabis to minors and driving under the influence, providing support for addiction treatment, mental health support and education programmes to inform people about the risks, access to quality controlled cannabis for medicinal purposes. Surely these principles should guide us too. Carrying on as we are has dreadful consequences. And I want to just make four key points. First, nowhere across the world has prohibition worked. Cannabis is available everywhere. Second, people have no idea what they are buying. We know that leaving supply in the hands of criminals puts particularly teenagers at risk. They are the most susceptible to suffering mental health consequences, including psychosis, from regular use of potent strains available on the street. The widespread use of these dangerous strains is the result of our failure to regulate. A regulated market would allow governments to control the safety and potency of cannabis sold by legal vendors. Yet through a misplaced desire to be tough on drugs, we leave teenagers vulnerable to exploitation from sellers who have no interest at all in their welfare. Through inaction, government and parliament are culpable. If something is potentially dangerous to children and young people, control it and regulate it. Don't leave it freely available from those keen to make a fast buck. Third, we know that the illegal market for drugs generates extreme violence in many communities, particularly the most disadvantaged. If a supplier faces competition, they don't resort to the courts to protect their market, they use extreme violence. Thousands of people have lost their lives as a result of illegal trade in drugs in countries like Mexico, but on the streets of our poorest communities, violence is meted out regularly. Young, vulnerable teachers, teenagers get caught up in this violent trade and can't escape. Yet it doesn't have to be like this. Fourth, we still criminalise thousands of people every year, taking up precious police time, which could be used to fight serious crime. Careers are blighted for using a substance which no doubt many people on the government benches have used at some stage in their lives. Meanwhile, the most harmful drug of all is consumed in large quantities right here in this building. Alcohol leads to violence on our streets and behind closed doors in people's homes. It destroys families up and down our country, yet we tax it and the Exchequer benefits enormously from it. Isn't there a dreadful hypocrisy that we allow our drug of choice whilst criminalising people who use another, less dangerous drug, many for the relief of pain. My bill, Mr Speaker, offers a more rational alternative to this mess, with strict regulation of the growing, sale and marketing of cannabis, with an age limit of 18 for the purchase and consumption of cannabis, with clear controls over potency of what is sold in licensed outlets, we can at last start to protect children and teenagers. We can at last treat all those people who suffer acute pain or who have conditions such as multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's and epilepsy with dignity and respect. We can end the shameful treatment of these people as criminals. We can at last end the extraordinary practice of handing billions of pounds every year to organised crime we can instead start to tax the sale of cannabis so that revenues can be used for good purpose, public health education, the NHS, schools and the police. We can start to take some of the violence and intimidation off our streets and restore order in our poorest communities. We can free up police time to focus on serious crime. Mr Speaker, this is rational evidence-based policy making, it's time for this country to act on the evidence and to protect children and young people from harm. Order. The question is that the right honourable member have leave to bring in the bill. Mr Steve Double. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. And uh, I first of all want to pay respect to the right honourable uh, member for 
uh, North Norfolk for uh, he, he introducing this bill. Uh, I know that he has a long record of, of campaigning uh, on this issue, and uh, whilst I strongly disagree with him, I do respect his desire that something be done to, to address this uh, very important issue. Because I'm sure, Mr. Speaker, we can all agree that something does need to be done about the current uh, situation yeah. with cannab cannabis use uh, in its current form that is uh, uh, wrong and unsustainable and doing a great deal of damage to our society. But I do not believe that liberalising it in the way that has just been proposed uh, and decriminalising it will be the answer. Part of my view uh, is uh, largely informed by experience that I have had personally of seeking to help and support people who have been regular users of cannabis, and I've seen very close up and first hand the lives that it wrecks, the impact on mental health that it has, and the cost that it not only has to the individuals, but to their families, to their communities, and to wider society. And I have to say to the right honourable gentleman, I was slightly confused in the line that he was taking, because he seemed to be confusing medical use for cannabis with recreational use. And uh, I think the government should take great credit for the progress that has yeah, been made yeah, recently yeah. in uh, allowing uh, yeah, yeah. the use of cannabis products for medical use, and that is absolutely right, and I believe has a great deal of support across the country. And uh, I would agree with the, with the argument that more should be done to, to ensure that cannabis for medical use gets to the people who really uh, need it. And I would agree with the point that more needs to be done to get, yeah, yeah. To get medical professionals on board and for them to adjust to the new uh, regime. But let's remember, these new measures were only introduced just a few weeks ago on the 1st of November, and I think we need to give more time to allow these changes to come into effect before we jump, take a huge leap of faith towards decriminalising cannabis altogether. My concern is that by liberalising cannabis use, we will be sending precisely the wrong message to our young people. We will be giving them the message that somehow cannabis is safe and okay to use. And I believe we need to make very clear that cannabis is a dangerous drug and there is no safe use in an uncontrolled way, in an unregulated way, for cannabis to be consumed. We, we are clearly in the midst of a war on drugs. But I would say that we do not win the war by raising the white flag and giving up and surrendering. We do, no war has ever been won by surrendering. Uh, it's been well established the impact of uh, regular cannabis use on mental health. There is strong evidence that demonstrates that frequent use of cannabis is linked to the inducement of uh, psychosis. One study in South London revealed that there was a threefold increase in the risk of individuals having a psychotic disorder uh, amongst regular cannabis users compared to those who do not use cannabis. In recent years, we have seen a steady decline in a uh, steady reduction in the use of cannabis. Over the last 20 years, it has declined by 30 per cent. YouGov polling conducted this year indicates that legislation could significantly disturb this overall downward trend. Over a quarter of people under 25 who have never tried cannabis, cannabis before indicated that they would definitely or likely or would be likely to try it if it was legalised. That is over 1 million 18 to 24 year olds. Of those who have, uh, who have used cannabis before, well over a third of 18 to 24 year olds said that they would be more likely to use it more regularly if it was decriminalised. I believe that legislation would send a very wrong message to our young people that cannabis is okay to use. And I think we all understand that for many people the use of cannabis is a gateway drug to more serious and more damaging uh, drug use. And therefore it would be absolutely wrong to send this message that somehow cannabis is okay because of where it would leave for many, many people. Of course, as with most laws, the Misuse of Drugs Act is uh, adhered to by the vast majority of people, but it is ignored by some. We must not forget that the current law does deter a great many of dr uh, from drug use, and this serves a very important public interest. But this is no endorsement of the status quo. We all have at least some common ground here. 
It is intolerable to see our young people hurting themselves or ending their lives prematurely because of the effects of this dangerous drug. Our approach must be bolder. We must be offering more meaningful support and aim to drive consumption down yet further. This will not be achieved by a new website or a helpline. We need to intervene and challenge, using experts in the field of drug use, recovered addicts and recovering users, who can reach out and invite uh, a real prospect of change for users. A procedure that replaces the current system of issuing a relatively ineffectual warning or punitive fine given by a police officer with an alternative of offering diversion through the attendance of a local drug awareness day would have a greater impact in reducing use. A part of what is currently charged as a fixed penalty notice could go instead to local treatment providers to pay for the service. Yeah. The uh, Right Honourable Gentleman refer referred to the situation in Canada, but it's, it's interesting that on the eve of the legislation being introduced in Canada, an article published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal referred to the legislation as a national uncontrolled experiment in which the profits of cannabis producers and tax Absolutely. revenues are squarely pitched against the health of Canadians. Yes, we can learn from experiments taking place elsewhere, but we don't need to risk the lives of some of our most vulnerable residents yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to do that. Yeah, yeah. This is one of, the most, uh, one of the many substances that plagues our communities and rob both young and old and predominantly the most disadvantaged of a full life. We must commit to do more to have a person-centric approach to show compassion, yet keep the, uh, the decisiveness of criminal law to intervene when the public interest demands it. I accept that there is a trend from other nations to legalise cannabis, but the evidence at this stage is still very mixed. Uh, legislation, uh, decriminalisation at best is a risky step for us to take. And whilst I understand the desire for something to be done to address this issue, I do not believe that liberalisation in this way is right for our country at this time. We need to do better for our young people, but giving up the war on cannabis is not the way to achieve that. I cannot support this bill, and if the House does divide on this issue, I will be voting against it, and I would encourage other members to join me to not allow this bill to progress. Yeah. Order. The question is that the right honourable member have leave to bring in the bill. As many as have that opinion say aye. 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 Of the contrary, no. no. Division! Clear the lobby. <laughs> Order. Order. The eyes to the right, 52. The nose to the left, 66. <laughs> the eyes to the right, 52. The nose to the left, 66. So the nose have it. The nose have it. Unlock. Order.